and I'm going to start in uh, 1993, inshallah, going back to 1993. What was it that led your heart, inshallah, to the to the religion of Islam and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bath and road? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala ma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, man yuridillahu an yahdiyahu yashrah sadrahu lil islam. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide, he opens his heart to Islam. He opens his heart to full submission. And I honestly... 27 years ago, you're talking about 1983. I don't know that I would be able to pinpoint today what it was that at that very moment just, you know, said to me, it's time to become a Muslim. Uh, but I do know that I had gotten to a point in my life where I had to accept the fact that there was a creator. So we just start there. Um, and you know, because prior to that, I guess I toyed with the idea of atheism. Um, you know, there was a period that I went through when I considered myself to be an atheist. Uh, though, as I kind of look back on it, I don't really think that I was convinced um, that there wasn't a God, but I wasn't convinced that there was a God. So I was probably stuck in some form of, uh, uh, being some kind of agnostic, if you will. Um, so I think once I came to the realization uh, intellectually um, that there had to be a creator uh, and that, as you know, when that intellect it coincides with your fitra, your natural disposition, which is towards the worship of one God, uh, there's a cohesion there that kind of takes you to the next level unless you put a barrier between yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which a lot of people do, and that's usually the barrier of arrogance. Um, and so mm. they allow their pride, their pride in who their ancestors are, for example. I, you know, I, how many people I've come across that just say, well, you know, I believe what you're saying, but my whole family is Christian. I, I can't, I can't leave off, you know, that way. That's part of, that's part of their identity, right? Um, and so <inaudible> they almost <inaudible> have... <inaudible> Right. But the, here, here's the thing. Subhanallah kind of reminds me of like today, um, you know, it, anyway, it's almost like a religious dysphoria. Right. So it's like, hmm. wait a minute. Uh, I know that I really should be Muslim. Right. But everybody else is like this in my family. So they kind of go through this this turmoil. Uh, if you can break down those barriers and you can allow, you know, both your your emotions, your 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 mental state. The, the, the fitra that you're upon, that cohesion with the intellectual uh, appeal of Islam, then oftentimes the rest is the guidance, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, even that first part is guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I'm saying that once you get your nafs out the way and you, you leave room for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, permeate your total existence, and then Allah takes over and you, and you start to see the truth for what it is. And you know, our Prophet, alayhi salatu uh, there's a, two du'as that come to my mind right now. The first is, uh, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa rizuqna tiba'a. See, the, the, the thing is, some people see the truth as the truth. They know that it's the truth, but they haven't been given that uh, ability to follow the truth. So they know it's true. Um, and I mean, there's no better example from the seal of the Prophet, alayhi salatu than his own uncle. Uh, Abu Talib, who knew that Islam was the truth, and he knew that the Prophet ﷺ was a prophet, but lem yurzak, you know, itibau. So he he wasn't given that that guidance to to follow the truth. And then the other mm -hmm. one is the uh, hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where part of the du'a is wahdini wa yasir al hudali, guide me and make guidance easy for me. So some people they know that this is guidance, but the guidance hasn't been made easy for them. So. To kind of be, get back to your question, uh, again, it'd be very difficult for me to, to, to pinpoint exactly what it was. But I, I will tell you, I know the process that I went through. The first part of the process was accepting the fact that there's a creator and just saying, wait a minute. The, the, yeah, in other words, that this creation, 
these things that exist could not have come from nothing. You know, even if we trace it back and we say matter and energy and, you know, we start talking about a big bang and all, even with that, something had to be there to bang, right? So logically, there had to be a beginning, you know? So there had to be a creator. Um, I mean, that was the process I was going through at the time. And then uh, after that, the acceptance of the fact that life must have a purpose uh, and that the creator has to communicate that purpose to his creation. And that is communicated through revelation, uh, which was brought by prophets. So going mm -hmm. through that process, even though I was young at the time, um, I felt like I had lived, you know, certain aspects of life that uh, a lot of older people hadn't probably lived yet. And I thought that at that point, I just said, you know what, it's time to stop playing games. You know, subhanAllah, this is, this is what it is. And I woke up one morning and I said, you know what, that's it. Today, I'm going to become a Muslim. Um, and that's what happened back in December of 1983. Is that why you, you chose to study Aqeedah in, in, in Medina? Was that the lead to focus more on Aqeedah than... But I wanted to ask a question before that. So I, so I don't forget the question. Inshallah, I'll keep it in mind. Uh, I just remember, Sheikhna, when you were speaking, the, uh, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when he said to the Sahaba that there will come a time where they, the action of an individual will equal to 50 of you. Was this the case at your time? How do you see uh, people accepting Islam now and back then? Where Did you have enough support at that time? Or you think now, alhamdulillah, it is better. Mm. Not the quantity. I'm talking about the quality of acceptance, you know? Well, it's really hard to say, Ahmad, because we've gone through many stages since, uh, since that time, right? Um, I, I, would, I would definitely say this. Islam was nowhere near as prominent then as it is now. Um, so we have a lot more masajid now. We have a lot more Islamic centers. And I'm talking about big ones, right? We have a lot more. Obviously, the, the information is a lot more. I mean, we, we're, we're on information overload. Um, that just did not exist back then. Um, and uh, obviously, the world has changed. I, I mean, 1993, we were not using the internet yet. I'm not saying that well, maybe email became a little bit more prominent, probably 95, 96. But even then, it still wasn't like, it wasn't like a prominent thing. And not, you know, everybody just had internet. And, you know, there obviously was no social media then and so forth. So it was a different time period. I think that the, uh, and it would be difficult for me to say that the quality of Muslim was better then. I, I, I don't, uh, that would be unfair to say, but we definitely were more strange. Um, and so the, 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 the ghurba, you know, like the prophet I used to say, give yeah. glad tidings to the strangers. You know, it was very odd to be a Muslim at that time. And, um, and I'm saying right now, we feel like it's odd in certain places that you might go um, in the United States. You know, it's more, Islam is more prevalent in larger cities that, you know, people know that you're a Muslim. But, you know, back then it was, it was a little bit different, man. Um, and we just didn't have the numbers now. So you go through a time period and then you, then 9-11 hits, right? 9-11 mm -hmm. was a generational game changer um, because mm -hmm. for some people, who were very proud to be Muslim before 9-11, they became prouder after 9-11. Um, you know, there, there was no hiding. I'm not going into hiding now, no. As a matter of fact, I didn't used to wear a kufi. Uh, now I'm gonna wear a kufi. I want everybody to know I'm Muslim and I want you to try me, see what happens. Cause mm. <laughs> we're not going out like that. You know, so <laughs> I'm not gonna hide because you think I'm a terrorist, right? Oh, yeah. um, there were some Muslims that were like that. There were other Muslims that said, wait a minute, this is a bit much. Um, and and it, it, geographically, obviously, it changes from place to place. And, um, you know, there's no harm. I mean, there's several things that have happened even since 9-11 that have, you know, made us recognize that Muslims are targets. And you don't just want to be out there being a target. But the whole point is, 
that um, it, that that was a generational game changer. But um, uh, you know, the, despite the the negative aspects of that um, attack, uh, it did make Islam. It did put Islam in the spotlight, right? So it gave mm-hmm. Muslims the opportunity to say, "Wait a minute, that's not what we stand for. This is what Islam really is." And you know, people who would attack uh, innocent civilians and so forth, that doesn't have anything to do with our deen. So it put some people on the defensive, but even being on the defensive, there was still attention that was being given, right? Um, and so so it, it did change the game in, in that sense, and it put Islam in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a spotlight, not necessarily obviously in the beginning, it definitely wasn't good. Um, but as time went on, uh, more people began to hear about Islam and then they would read about Islam and then they would go try to meet some Muslims and Muslims became more proactive and getting and getting the message out and trying to meet their neighbors and so on and so forth. So um, your original question was what? Right back behind me, Amar. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying now. I'm enjoying now. No, the, but what was, what was the, the original question? Because like was, you, you just... Was it, was the, the, the brothers at that time or the brotherhood of Muslims at that time uh, the the feeling of it, like when you first become religious or when you first start oh, joining, was it okay. different feeling than now being, you know, alhamdulillah, we have more Muslims, we have more masajid, but I'm I'm sure it's not the the same connection. Well, no, 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 no. I I would I would say one of the major major differences that I re- I can distinctly recall from that time um, was was the spirit of connectedness the spirit of sacrifice yes um that i have found to kind of dissipate and i'm not saying that people don't sacrifice now they don't sacrifice their wealth you know to build the massage and so forth but back then it was different it was it it was different that was ingrained in us that and, and it probably was because our numbers were smaller now we've got more numbers and many hands make light work and you know for you know, massive fundraisers, this person give this and this person give that. But back then it was like, it was just this little group, you know, and everybody had to really dig deep, you know, um, you know, women had to take off their jewelry, literally, you know, for Mm -hmm. fundraisers, Mm -hmm. um, because we needed everything that we could get, you know, to, to support the house of Allah. And that, that type of sacrifice is not necessarily just, it's not the same spirit, you know, today as it was then, but there's still, there's, there's things that are better now, obviously. I mean, the services that are offered to the Muslim community now, um, I think are much more, uh, they're much broader than the services that were offered back then. And I, I think the vision that we have for ourselves, you know, as American Muslims is is different than it was back then. I, and I, I would even say a different in a, in a better sense. Like, you know, we, we see ourselves as part of the, the society as a whole and therefore are trying to forge you know, our identity within the broader society without sacrificing our values and without just totally melting into the pot. 